Hello everyone, um, just back from the update, but this time not just on sell and crypto, but also the traditional markets. Uh, it's been a really crazy week uh, last week and so far into this week. Um, you'll probably have seen by now all over Twitter, if you haven't, I don't know where you've been, that Wall Street bets have got involved in the GME squeeze against uh, Melvin Capital. Um the billionaire hedge fund on Wall Street, and it's uh, it's been amazing to watch. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and what's happened and a bit of the fallout. Uh, we're also going to talk about how crazy uh, Dogecoin has been and XRP and the dangers in the markets that a lot of new people are going to fall for. And a little uh, end it off with a little explanation on the current sell price and where it's going. Hopefully in the future. So. Wall Street bets, um, brilliant, brilliant Reddit thread. Uh, check it out if you haven't been on it. It's now the uh, part three Avengers, Infinity Squeeze War. So it's actually a model, um, where this squeeze could just continue to go on if everybody holds and keeps buying. Um, but there's a lot of things happening in the background, um, from the exchanges and the billionaires themselves to try and play this back into their favour. It's really interesting. Uh, so you should definitely do a bit of research on it if you do think it's interesting. But the the, the main thing uh, that everybody's pissed off about is basically the billionaires and the exchanges changing the rules in the middle of the battle. Now, the average person here knows exactly what they are doing, what they are buying into and the risks that come along with that. And the billionaire hedge fund, Melvin Capital, who should have known better put themselves in an overly exposed position. And what they were actually doing is a naked short. So for the last year, they've been shorting GameStop uh, and profiting from this. And they were basically shorting the company almost into the ground. And somehow they were shorting over 100% of shares, which should be illegal because how can more than 100% of shares exist? So... Naked shorting is the illegal practice of short selling, but there's loopholes, obviously. Now, with the rise of bots and computers, etc., these loopholes can be exploited. So what we had was Melvin Capital naked shorting the GME stock, and whilst they were doing this, people on Reddit and other average people realised what was happening, thought, oh, we can save GameStop. There's not enough shares available to buy in the market in terms of the spread. So as soon as they start buying, the price will rock it up and that will result in a squeeze. And now there's actually no historical data in any point in time previously that is of this order of magnitude for how this squeeze will play out or how high it can go. And um, yeah, basically, Melvin Capital got absolutely screwed with a caught naked shorting. And the reason for this is... As I mentioned before, they were shorting over 100% of the shares, which is ludicrous. Um, we're actually looking at how the naked shorting works. The when when Melvin Capital are working with the likes of Robin Hood, they have they have like a they have two accounts, a broker account and uh, Melvin Capital's account. Now, when they're shorting a position, they have to also be able to fund that account. And what happened was when this squeeze happened. Melvin Capital were having loads of losses on the on the, on the balance sheet and then actually weren't able to fund the, the, the broker account because you have to be able to cover. So it says here, you must have the advance on the initial margin into your account to guarantee the broker that there is money in your account to cover any losses. Um, and I went in an interview with another exchange, one of the CEOs mentioned this, although they didn't say it was because of Melvin Capital. They were careful with their words. But basically... This is exactly what's happened. So as we as you see down here, when this price goes up, they have to suddenly cover a lot more money because they're losing out from trying to short. So as soon as this price moved up, Melvin Capital are like shit, we can't fund the account. And then Robin Hood's like shit, Melvin Capital can't fund the account that they need to. Oh, we're gonna have to do it. We're there. We don't have billions upon billions of dollars. To cover the account, shit. We need to freeze it. We need to get some selling, like selling happening. That's what we saw. Robin Hood froze the account, so they were kind of in a hard place. 
A, they shouldn't have let Melvin Capital sort to that extent. It's stupid. Any any generic risk assessment for somebody in that industry and market should know that. It it's simple, right? And B, so it's not entirely their fault, although they are part to blame. They've had to actually freeze the ability to buy GME so that they can get some stuff sold off as well, so that they can cover that account which is going bust. And then the other hedge funds have dived in to help Melvin Capital. And then in the background, uh, whilst whilst Robin Hood and all of the others have froze GME, in the background, I'm pretty sure shares were still getting sold to try and bring it back down. So there's definitely some shady stuff going on in the background. It's very hard to uh, figure it all out. But Elon Musk was happy to call them out on it. And we didn't get a very clear answer. Um, I think it's because we all know they've been up to the, some dodgy shit. So they've been breaking the laws, they'll probably get a fine, and the billionaires change the rules in the middle of the game. The system is not your friend. It only benefits the elite. And everybody who's buying Bitcoin and sell and just getting into cryptocurrency, novice, and that is really good. So it's a really good advertisement for cryptocurrency. More and more people are seeing the, the uh, benefits of decentralization decentralized exchanges which can't be which can't be like turned off or froze um so you know what's just happened is really good for bitcoin and the cryptocurrency industry and i really do hope the guys in wall street bets and girls and everybody else involved hold their positions because melvin capital should be absolutely punished for a naked shorting which is pretty much illegal and for being so stupid to put themselves in an overly exposed position if me or you did that We'd get fucked, lose all our money. Nobody would care. Stupid. Anyway, just on that, on Twitter, <laughs> this guy, the chairman, he's not associated with Wall Street Bets. And this is what I love about the internet. So this guy created this account, I don't know, whenever, and Elon Musk liked one of his tweets, and he went from like 11,000 followers to 946.8k followers in the space of a week. Now, this is dangerous for people in crypto, but it is also hilarious. Like, he, he's just gone online, he's just taking the piss out of Wall Street, he's saying this, let's do this, buy some Dogecoin, do this. Has Uni seen $100 before? Buy Uni. And look, he's got that many followers, people are just like, oh my god, Wall Street bets. People don't even pay attention to the bio parody. The real Wall Street bets is uh, WSB mods, I think. Yeah, WSB mod, they're the official one. So this random guy just takes over the internet. <laughs> Everybody thinks he's the real Wall Street bets, and the internet's gone, gone to shit. And he says, ooh, Dogecoin. Elon Musk says Dogecoin. And guess what happens? Dogecoin fucking flies. <laughs> so in 2021, Dogecoin so far has been the best performing asset if you sold at the top. Now, this is clearly a pump and dump. Um, so never chase the pump and if it it's a meme coin okay so if you're new to crypto doge is not a coin for long-term gains it is for pure banter buy a little bit in the bear market and enjoy it when it pops off like this uh, in in the bull market so yeah five days over 800 percent of gains and now we'll come all the way back down and when we get to the bottom of this triangle it will go back down and it'll settle until it gets hyped up again uh, and I also missed what happened to the GME stock um, due to the squeeze and everybody jumping on board. Um, 635% in four days. That is amazing for stocks and shares. It really is. It's obviously coming back down now. We see the red candles. But um, this is this is the war. And at the moment it's going down. But I don't know how it's going to finish. Uh, so, yeah. Pumping, um, pump and dumps. Avoid them, never chase the pump, choose your favourite projects and accumulate them in for the, uh, for the long term. That's the best way to do it. Not advice, just common sense approach. Um, so this brings me on to the XRP pump 1st of February. I hope you didn't get burned. Um, if you're new to the space, never go along with a hype train just because hype. Okay, If you just look down here... I think Telegram gets mentioned somewhere. Telegram group planning a coordinating buy. Scam. Absolute scam. Like, 
like people like us can get XRP to go up when all of the billionaires have millions upon millions upon millions of tokens that have been doing nothing for three years straight. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to exit. They're going to dump on you. And guess what happens? We've got February the 1st, halfway through the day. XRP shit a fucking brick. Look at that. That's where we were. That, that, was, that was when the pump was meant to happen. And then the, the day beforehand, people were like, oh, it's pumping early. No, it was just people hyping, expecting this big pump to come. That it was going to happen on the 1st. And everybody who got conned into it basically got shot on. So... Never go chasing a pump or dump. If it's your thing, and you're like, if you bought XRP down here, and then you found out about the pump and dump here, like, fair enough, you're already in the game. But when it when when it's say scheduled for the first of February, and you find out about it on the thirty first of January. Chances are you're gonna buy it here, and then you're gonna go to sleep, and it's gonna go like this, and then you're gonna wake up, it's gonna be back down here, and you'll be at a loss. You know, a lot of new people don't understand how to make trading uh buy and trading sell orders stop loss orders and um, even i don't use them so yeah just be careful with pump and dumps like it's great to watch but it's not great to participate if you get it wrong um so if you find out about them don't don't hype them don't share them because somebody will get burned uh sell token so what we saw with sales basically it's 3x from mid-December, early December to the start of January. Since then, we've had a lot of profit takers, panic sellers, as you can see here. And we've kind of got a floor around about, a low floor of about $420. Now, this is having a lot of growth in users. But if, you know, if, if a lot of people decide to sell at the same time, there's a lot more selling pressure than there is buy pressure. But really, this token's done really well in terms of like, how far it went of a 300% correct um, gain, you would at least see a 50 to 60% correction in normal market, like most tokens. And that does happen a lot. So we haven't seen that because of the buy wall. You know, it's got the resistance there. So I think maybe for the next three or four weeks, we could see a bit more accumulation, get to around about here, bounce off the bottom of the channel and start to make our way up again. I have seen predictions, kind of like $12 range for the end of February, mid-March. But um, yeah, if you believe in the project, these these are opportunities to buy. Like, If you're buying any cryptocurrency for a quick flip, then you're not doing crypto properly. It's an accumulation game. You know, Whenever you get these opportunities for your favorite projects, you should be buying a little bit often. Not a financial advice, just a safe approach. And... When it does take off, you're suddenly, you're suddenly sat on a lot of gains. Um, you know, research your market cycles and just find a project. That's how you invest. You don't need to be a trader. You don't need to do leverage. Just accumulate safely and get really interest paid on it, which is great. And to uh, just round it off, the sell token, right? Let me put this into perspective. At New Year, we had 100,000 users. So in one month... We have grown by 29,000 new active depositors, yeah? Now, when I joined Celsius in May 2020, there was a total of about 21,500 active users, right? And that took them two years, right, to get that many people. We've just done that in one month. So, what do you think, like, what do you think we're going to do for the rest of this year? We've got... We're probably going to get anywhere between 350 and 750 felt like active depositors. It really wouldn't surprise me. And then when do we get when we get to the bull market? Sorry, the end of the bull cycle back into the year, some point in 2022 when everything's going down. What's everybody going to want to do during the bear market? They're going to want to accumulate because they've, they've learned all the lessons from this one. They're like shit, it's going to happen again in 2024, 2025. Where do you think? All of the stable coins are going to go, or the Bitcoin, They're going to go into apps like Celsius and get six percent a year for free, no risk on trading, no brainer, isn't it? So eight hundred people a day, yeah. By the end of February, we'll be seeing over a thousand people a day of active depositors. So I think an active deposit is anything above two hundred dollars a token. So it's looking good. All you need is patience, and you'll be good.
Danke.